Now we're going to look at the center of mass of just a macroscopic object, a large object. At the beginning, I pointed out that you can think of it as a collection of particles because it's a bunch of little atoms all stuck together, all moving together. So we think of it as an extended object. We've got to find its center of mass. We're going to start with the simplest one, a uniform rod. So uniform means it's a constant diameter and a constant mass density. So we're not pulling any tricks here. It's just a rod like this. It's got a length L and a mass M, big M. Right. I happen to have one here. If you take 102x, my electricity and magnetism course, you'll become very familiar with this. This is my Teflon rod. And it's exactly what we're talking about here. We've got to find its center of mass. So since we're finding an actual position in space, we need a coordinate system. So let's see, I'm going to draw an x-axis along the, ring, the length of the rod with its origin at one end of the rod, because that'll make it easier. So this would be the point where x equals l at the end of the rod. Uh, let's see, we also need to be able to think about, we're going to need the mass density. So usually linear densities are called lambda. So we'll say lambda, the mass per unit length, is big M over L. So if you're not sure what I mean by mass density, mass per unit length. All right. And what else do we need? Hmm. We need a formula for the center of mass. So when they're individual particles, you do one over the total mass and you add up each of their positions. But we can't really do that here because we don't have individual particles. So we're going to do our standard trick of how we use an integral. We break something up into little slices and think of the slices as individual particles. So this little piece has some mass, and it's at position x. And then we're just going to add all those up. All right, so the position of the center of mass is similar. It's 1 over the total mass. But instead of a sum of individual particles, it's an integral where we sum up every one. So it's at x, and then the mass of that particle is dm. It's a differential piece of the rod. Right, so this is the position, and this is the mass, just like in the formula where we had the sum. So if we're going to integrate, we usually like to integrate over a dimension, over a, uh, an axis, not over mass. So we need to convert this dm into something related to x. Right? And that's what we're going to do with this density. We know that for a small piece, a small piece of the rod, dm is equal to lambda times dx. Right? That's what the mass density is. It's the mass per unit length. So if I'm talking about a little piece here with a length dx, then its mass is dm. So we can, uh, let's see here, we can say this dm must be lambda dx. So we get that the center of mass position is 1 over big M times the integral of um, x lambda dx. All right, but we're tricky, so we know we can go ahead and pull the lambda out. Right? It's a constant, so we can pull lambda out here. And then now we're simply looking at the integral of x dx. But I didn't put the limits on the integral. The most important thing, well, not the most important, among the most important things, is that we have to think about we're adding these masses up from where to where, now that we're in terms of x, from the origin to L. Right? So we're integrating from 0 to L. So there's an integral that we can do here. Let's see. So this must be lambda over m. And this is 1 half x squared evaluated from 0 to L. All right. So if we evaluate that at L, it's 1 half L squared. At 0, it's just 0. So we get uh, lambda over m, 1 half L squared. That looks horribly complicated. That doesn't look nice. But the reason is lambda and big M kind of have similar information in them. All right, so we calculated lambda uh, from big M. So if we substitute lambda to be big M over L, you see what's going to happen. This is going to be big M over big M L. There's lambda, 1 half L squared. Oh, then the masses go away. One of the L's goes away. And we get 1 half L for the center of mass. At the x position, 1 half L is, oh, I unfortunately drew the dx right in the middle, but it's right here, right? 1 half L. So the center of mass of the rod is in the middle of the rod, right? right in the center, as you might expect. Keep in mind, the center of mass doesn't mean the point where the same mass is on both sides. 
uh, it means the mass is distributed in a similar way on both sides, or the amount of mass times position is the same on both sides. It's not just that the mass is the same on the both sides. Here, that's the case because this is a very symmetric object. Right? Also, keep in mind that it doesn't uh, depend on the coordinate system you set up. What if we had said, oh, let's put the origin in the middle? Then we would have said, let's see, if the origin in the middle, that would have only changed the limits of the integration. Right? It would have been from minus L over 2 to L over 2. And we evaluated that, we would have plugged in L over 2 would be L squared over 4 minus L over, minus L over 2 squared is L squared over 4. We would have gotten 0. Well, it can't be 0. Oh, well, yeah, it can be, because we put the origin. X equals 0 was in the middle. So we could put the origin anywhere. And we'd always find that the center mass ends up in the middle of the rod. It does not depend um, on the coordinate system. So if we want to show that with our rod, one way you can find a center mass is sort of unrelated. It gets into torques and stuff we'll do later. But if you just balance it, it balances um, at the center of mass. If, you, if it's an object, you can kind of balance on your finger like that. So you can see this one balances in the center. If I put it here, see, it didn't balance there. Center mass is in the middle. 